Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I want to talk about Comcast again because it's Friday as of the time of recording this and very, very interesting things going on with Comcast. Uh, like I mentioned with the uh, earnings that came out, I didn't think they were too bad. Um, they didn't seem, to, they didn't really concern me that much. Um, but Comcast has fallen off a cliff. Uh, as of the time that I'm recording this, they're trading for about $37 a share, which is a ridiculously low price to me. Um, I still maintain my $43 per share uh, target for a buy. So I bought like crazy today, um, took it take that for what it's worth um, but I think it's a crazy crazy price uh, that, that we're seeing right now and if I I deployed all the cash I had available basically um, I, because the price was so cheap Comcast is by far now my largest holding in my portfolio um, which is fine the, totally totally 100 percent fine with me um that that i am super overweighted in comcast and that the price has declined here's the thing though <clears throat> they released their earnings and within two days the company was worth 14 percent less in terms of market cap than it was two days ago think about that for a second the price dropped 14% in two days. That's absolutely stupid. <laughs> Just completely stupid. Uh, and, and you might be going, wow, what a terrible, uh, terrible uh, decision it is to, to buy into Comcast or whatever might be the case, right? Um, I... I don't think so. Uh, but think about how stupid that is. There's nothing that has fundamentally changed about this company at all. And it's worth almost 15% less than it was two days ago. That's stupid. That's stupid. That's, that's gambling, right? People are gambling here. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm at a loss for words. So I wanted to take this time to, to talk about stuff uh, with you guys. Um, I actually want to talk about uh, a Morningstar analyst, Michael Hodel. Uh, he came out with a note yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. The title of this note is Comcast stock deeply undervalued as market misinterprets zero growth. So, I, first of all, what I want to say is I completely agree with what Michael is saying here. Right? Um, I just want to read this first paragraph and then a couple of lines in the second paragraph of Mark Michael's note. He says, Comcast's second quarter was a mixed bag, but the market has keyed in on one negative figure, zero net broadband customer additions during the period, with a loss of 10,000 net residential customers. Very modest broadband growth is likely here to stay. So I, I, I actually agree with that. Um, and it's kind of concerning, right? You could, okay, you're only saying that you're going to grow moderately, modestly, but I digress. Let's move on with what Michael's saying. We believe investors are better served focusing on the firm's ability to generate strong cash flow despite lingering pandemic headwinds and to return that cash to shareholders. Our $60 fair value estimate is unchanged, right? I actually 
completely agree with this. That that's the first that's the end of the first paragraph that he wrote. I completely agree with this, and I don't think that the sixty dollar uh, fair value estimate that he's putting on Comcast is unreasonable, right? Um, in fact, it seems totally reasonable to me. If you're looking for, you know, nine, ten percent of your returns, something around there would probably get you in that sixty dollar range. So totally 100% on board with what my, what Michael's saying here. Um, moving on with Michael's note, uh, CEO Brian Roberts outlined three reasons for the drop in customer growth. Economic conditions that have slowed custom consumer move rates. So this is people moving from house to house and adding new subscriptions to, to Comcast, right? Um, that was that's the thing, right? If people are moving, they're gonna go, oh, I need a new cable provider. Who is the cable provider in this area? Okay, it's Comcast, right? They're gonna get their internet from Comcast uh, because they're the cheapest, best pro provider in the area. So people aren't moving as much, basically. That's a macroeconomic thing that's going on. Um, the reversal of pandemic driven trends. So this is people bought more subscriptions to uh, Comcast internet services and things like that because they were stuck at home. People aren't stuck at home anymore, right? So they're, they're not adding things to, to their Comcast bill because they don't have anything to do, right? They have new things to do. So there's some headwinds there for Comcast. And then the third thing, and competitive pressures, including fixed wireless. This is competition from Verizon, uh, AT&T, T-Mobile. Um, these guys are all building out wireless uh, uh, networks that at, with 5G capabilities are said that they're going to be able to compete with uh, traditional broadband services. So that they're saying, people trying these things out, it has slowed down the growth for broadband significantly. Um, Michael then goes on to say, none of these is a revelation. We all knew that these, this was gonna happen, right? So that nothing new has been revealed. There's no new information here, right? That, that came out with the quarterly earnings. Comcast again insisted that customer churn remains extremely low. Think about that for a second. They had a whole bunch of additions in the pandemic years and they haven't churned out. Think about that for a second. It means that they've grown. Basically what, what I'm hearing from this is that they got a couple of years worth of growth stacked up in 2020 with the pandemic. So that's what's going on with them, right? Um, part of the weakness, uh, and, and skipping ahead a little bit, part of the weakness reflects a return to normal seasonal patterns. I said that in my reaction video. Uh, the second quarter was the weakest quarter in broadband customer growth every year with a 10-year average of 185,000 net additions in what was less mature business than it is today, right? So what, what Michael's saying here is the business is matured. It, second quarter is going to be weak. It's just going to be weak, right? And if you think about that, that's typically when people start uh, trying to sell their homes and stuff is is second quarter. And so, yeah, it's going to be kind of a weak quarter. Uh, and then probably third quarter, early third quarter to mid third quarter is when people tend to move, right? That's just seasonal patterns of human behavior, at least in North America. Um, one thing that the CEO 
said was that Roberts was also the latest cable executive to largely dismiss the fixed wireless threat, stating that wireless network capacity is fundamentally limited. Michael goes on to say, we agree, right? Um, T-Mobile and their peers, skipping ahead again, T-Mobile and their peers won't risk degrading the service provided to their core wireless phone customers to add a relatively small amount of broadband revenue, right? So basically what they're saying is that broadband internet cable is here to stay. People are going to want that for their houses. And uh, these phone companies aren't going to want to degrade service for people on their phones, right? Uh, out and about because they're not, uh, because they've got people streaming crap in their homes, right? The You're just not gonna see the kind of growth that, that people are saying that they're going to see in these other telecoms, right? I have to say, I completely 100% agree with everything that Michael's written here. Uh, it's basically my exact same sentiment, right? Um, I feel like the, and here's the thing, zero growth doesn't mean zero cash flow, right? It just means that cash flow probably isn't going to grow very quickly. Um, there's still value in the cash flows themselves. Uh, and that's what I'm picking up on, right? And I think that that the market is completely misinterpreting zero growth in the second quarter. I think we're gonna see a return to growth in the third quarter, and you're gonna see a big spike in Comcast uh, share prices if we don't see it return and normalize to something a little bit more uh, understandable in over the course of this quarter, right? Um, I do want to talk about the bear case a little bit right because there are three things that, that he says about um, that Michael said Michael Hodel says about the bear case um, Comcast businesses so so here are the three things that he says about the bear case for Comcast uh, the business is heavily exposed to traditional TV models um, and the firm's going to struggle to post any revenue growth because of that as that that um that that segment declines right um fine whatever um comcast reputation for customer growth is poor at best i have to agree with that everybody that i talk to is uh they say they hate Comcast, right? It's not a beloved company by any stretch of the imagination. Their brand is, frankly, terrible, right? Uh, they're, they're just a terrible brand. Uh, the, that's why they, they created the Xfinity brand, right? Is because Comcast was so hated. Um, and then... The, the third and final piece for the bear case is they've got $90 billion in debt, which is going to drag uh, on the company. I think those are important things to remember about Comcast. Um, but I think that that debt is low interest rate debt, and that's going to be a good thing. Uh, overall, as interest rates climb, I think they're going to be able to repurchase that debt on the open market at a much, much lower price than what they issued it for. Um, and I think it's going to give them an opportunity to re basically return cash to shareholders by by purchasing that debt. Because um, I think that's an underappreciated thing is debt repurchasing. Right, it has a very similar effect to share repurchasing, which Comcast is doing massively in this undervalued market. Right, when their stock is undervalued, which I 
love, right? I love that they are purchasing shares at incredibly low valuations. I think that is a smart move, and I think Comcast is doing the right thing by their shareholders to do it, right? So anyway, I, I think that, that me and Michael Hodel, we, we sort of sit in the same camp. Uh, he's probably, in his models, he's probably using something more of like a weighted average cost of capital to determine, you know, what rate to discount at, and that's sort of giving him something closer to that $60 per share mark. Um, I'm still at 43, I'm still way below 43 at, you know, $37 a share. Um, and I am happy to continue buying and I will continue to, I will continue to keep buying, right? Uh, as long as I have the cash to do it. Um, and so I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep sitting here and buy, 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 buy. Um, as long as Comcast is as deeply undervalued as it is. By the way, I think the telecom sector in general uh, is incredibly underpriced at the moment. Um, but that's just me. Uh, anyway, until next time, stay rational, my friends.